I'm not in a good mood today. And the reason I'm not in a good mood today is because there are three stories that are absolutely irritating me. Well, first of all, Kai Havertz's deal has collapsed. I don't understand what's going on. One minute it's on, next minute it's not on. I don't know whether I need to get excited that we're going to keep the guy or I'm going to have to be on the edge of my seat for the rest of the transfer window that we could be losing our player because he's already asked to leave. We're going to break that down. Then we need to get into Angola Kante. When we said we want to start selling players again, get rid of the deadwood, I didn't mean Felix and Kante. What the hell's going on here? We're going to break this down. I know he deserves every penny of the 100 million a year. I am getting worried. Levi Colwell, the saga's never ending. Brighton are taking their shot from the three point line, from the low goal, trying to bid 40 million pounds. And I'm going to rent on that because they're getting a bit too big for their boots, the way Stormzy said it. And it's ridiculous because they want 100 million for Saicedo, but they have the audacity, the audacity to bid 140 million pounds. Don't piss me off. And finally, Christian Pulisic. Big man, you're meant to be the marketing king. You're meant to be Captain America. Why are you still at the club? Why is Newcastle coming out and saying they don't want him? And AC Milan have put the talks on pause. Then we're going to break this down, get into it. Let's Without wasting any time, you already know the deal. Hit the like button. We're aiming for a thousand likes. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And finally, in a pinned comment below is my Instagram. Go follow me there and hit me up with any football related questions you guys have. It's the place where I respond. But let's talk about Kai Havertz because that's what we're here for. Yesterday, I reported that Kai Havertz wants to be leaving the club. He's spoken to Chelsea. He said, I'm not interested in staying. The reason why is the man feels underappreciated and just wants a new challenge. At the end of the day, guys, the way Chelsea fans react and treat Kai Havertz, I don't blame him for wanting to go. Me, on the other hand, Kai, bro, I love you, man. You deserve to stay at this club. Give him a new contract. I think he's been given an unfair challenge. I think he's been an unfair opportunity. You're asking him to be something he's not. So to my surprise, when I go back on Twitter a couple of hours later and all of a sudden, boom, the deal has collapsed. So it's being reported by Marker that the deal started, they started having negotiations and they just realized Chelsea aren't letting this guy go for anything within the realm that Real Madrid thought was possible. Real Madrid wanted to get him for somewhere between the 50 to 60 million pound mark. Reports in England suggested that that could be enough. Then Chelsea briefed everyone and said, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. You thought I was finished. And they want around about 75 million pounds. And the reason they want this 75 million pounds is because they think he's worth it. And Pochettino wants this man to stay. And this is what I'm gonna tell you guys that are gonna moan. Because I put a poll out and at 72% of you lot, 2,000 of you voted, said, I don't understand what, you're, what you mean selling. You don't sell your best players. And people can say Kai Havertz is not our best player. He is our best player. Kai Havertz is Mr. Big Game. Kai Havertz is not a number nine, yet he consistently, on the big occasions, performs like he's a number nine. We need to build around him. We need to use him as a supplementary piece for the key elements of the team and ensure that he gets the best out of himself. Because once he gets that, we become a better team and we get more consistent. Stop trying to turn players into something they're not. The reason I think Madrid don't want to pay 75 million is because they've gone and signed Jude Bellingham right now for 100 million euros. And the rumors are that they're gonna go for two other alternatives at the number nine position. Number one being Rodrigo. Rodrigo is the lead striker, he's the alternative. And number two, their dream, Harry Kane. They believe no other striker in the league is good enough no other striker in the world is good enough to replace Karim Benzema and Harry Kane is the man to do so. Guys, if Madrid want Kai Havertz, if Bayern Munich are interested in Kai Havertz but just don't have the financial power at this moment in time to go and get this deal done, why on earth are we not interested in keeping Kai Havertz? Why do we have to go through the same predicament of where we lose him and in a couple years time we're going to be talking about you know what, we really should have kept Kai. Why? The, the signs are there that this guy is a baller. The signs are there that we see how good this individual can be on occasion. It's about now giving him the environment, the capability, the breadth of talent to enable him to consistently perform. And next season, if he doesn't perform on the potch, then so be it, let him go. But right now, give him a new deal, sign him up to, uh, for another five year deal, and then we go from there. That's my first. Now I'm going to rant a little bit because a lot of you are going to say, Alex, why are you ranting? They finished above us. Listen, this small club, Brighton Hove Albion, yeah? They're trying to take our boys for mugs because evidently they couldn't do this nonsense with Marina because she was savvy. Now they did it with Bowley and charged us 62 million for Kukurea and took Levi Kowo on loan. Now they're trying to shenangle Levi Kowo away from us for 30 million. Didn't happen. Gave him an interview where they were feeding him answers and trying to manipulate the kid to leave us and join them. Now they're trying to set another bid. After the first 30 million was laughed out, they're trying to go for another round. They're trying to go for 40 million pounds. And I'm gonna say, are we pricks? Are we idiots? 
Are we fools? Are we morons? And need I continue with these words because at this moment in time you're taking a piss. You got screwed over by selling McAllister for 35 million because you put a release clause in him. But yet you're asking for 100 million for Saicedo. And if I'm gonna say something right now, you're all gonna call me deluded, but this is the fact of the matter. Saicedo is the Levi Colwell of center backs. L Levi Colwell is the Saicedo of midfielders. And the reason I'm saying this is because they're both of a similar level of potential and talent. Both of them are worth the same value. So if you're telling me Saicedo is a 100 million pound player, so is Levi Colwell. There is no way a 19 year old English international, soon to be an England under 21 star, is not expected to be worth more than 40 million pounds. Are we mugs? Are you taking a mick? They're literally trying to take the biscuit and it's frustrating me because Chelsea under no circumstances should be doing this. And now if Todd Bowley has the ego that I think he has, he tells him to shut up, do one and take Saicedo off him and literally embarrasses this club because Brighton now are trying to embarrass Chelsea. They're taking the mick. They know exactly what they're doing. We go for one of their players, everything's inflated, everything's overpriced. They come for one of ours and they think we should be opening the doors and the fridge and letting them eat whatever's wanted. You got Tariq Lamptey for five million. You got Billy Gilmore in a uh, cut deal, beautiful one. You stole money for uh, Marco Correa. And now you expect us to give you Levi Colwell on loan, let you see how good he is, show the world how good he is and accept 40 million pounds. The kid's not for sale. Do one and don't come back. Literally, if I'm Chelsea, under no circumstances is Levi Colwell leaving the club. Levi Colwell leaving the club is embarrassing. And it goes down for three reasons. Number one, he's good enough to start for the club right now. As of this moment, he's good enough to start. Number two, his ceiling is one of the best Premier League defenders in the league. That's how good his ceiling can be. This is the type of player you want to purchase. If he was at Leipzig, we'd be talking about him the way we're talking about Garvidal. I'm sorry, it's the fact of the matter. And finally, this is the biggest one. If Levi Colwell can't make it at Chelsea, what hope is there for Cobham? Why do we even have Cobham? Because the reality is not every player is meant to make it. However, the extremely talented individuals are meant to make it. The Reese Jameses of the world, the Mason Mounts of the world, potentially the Callum hudson Adoys of the world before the injury. But yet, people want to let go of another elite level talent. You can't do that. And a lot of you are going to say, Mason Mount is not elite level. Mason Mount, at the age of 21, was starting for a Champions League winning side. He won a Super Cup, he won a Club World Cup. The talent's clearly there, he's just regressed. He hasn't kicked on. Levi is ready to play and ready to contribute now. Stop doing all this nonsense. Don't be silly. Resign him to a bit better contract. Keep him at the club and play him next year. Enough is enough. I'm now done. it's time to get into the segment where we're proud of an individual that's moving on from our club that has given a lot for us. Engel Kante literally joined us from Leicester, won two Premier League titles. Not only did he win Premier League titles, he went on to win, actually he didn't win two Premier League, he won one Premier League title, my mistake. But not only did he win the Premier League title, he won a Europa League, Champions League, he won a FA Cup, and not only that, he was instrumental in our success and arguably being one of our few world-class players in recent history. Angola Kante is an individual that I'm extremely proud to say played for my club. I loved him, I knew what I was always getting, I was never cheated as a fan for effort and energy. The player is phenomenal. And now Angola Kante has joined the team that Kareem Benzema has joined in the Saudi of Arabia. And what's really nice is he's getting paid a lot of money. And as a footballer, to get paid 100 million um, euros a year for two years plus an option of a third so nearly a quarter of a over a quarter of a billion in a span of three years he can't say no to that so the reality is Chelsea are doing the right thing they try to negotiate with him they're not going to start competing over wages to try keep him because there's no way they're going to be able to match that they're just going to destroy their whole like scheme they're going to destroy their whole wage roll and evidently Angola wants to move on and there are two ways that I'm looking at this whole situation Number one is, boy oh boy am I gonna miss Angola Kante and I'm getting worried in what direction we're going. When I said I want the Deadwood out, I did not think the first two players to be leaving the club are going to be Joao Felix and Angola Kante. Zakaria left, he's the third, but those two, in my opinion, are starters. So when we lose those two, I'm getting worried with what we're actually doing. It looked like Kai Havertz was gonna leave, my hair was starting to fall out. Like I was literally getting stressed, I was getting nervous, and I was getting sleepless nights because I didn't know what we were gonna be watching. Is 12th gonna be a normality? But the reality is we need to calm down a bit and we need to give the boys some time, literally get some more of the players out. Number two, 
Angola Kante deserves this payoff. Angola Kante is an individual that has had a lot of injury problems and with these injury problems, I think the last few years of his career have been stolen. I think since the Champions League win, Angola Kante has just been incredibly inconsistent and more importantly, just not on the pitch. He's just not been available. So when somebody's not available, what's the point of having him? Like at this moment in time, we're just paying wages and it's just, he's there, but really he isn't there. You, on paper, you say I have a world-class player in Angola Kante, but in reality, he's not playing. I am upset that we're losing him. I'm more upset at the idea of the player that we're losing, the leader by example, that leads by example rather than vocally, the individual that covers ground like no one I've ever seen, the individual that is just a Duracell bunny in a sense that you can give him, put him in that midfield and everyone around him is just energized and everyone looks 50% better and everybody raises their game because they go, I got that guy on my team. So for me, Engolo, I wish you all the success. I wish you all the happiness. I wish you the peace and love in Saudi Arabia that you're going to get from those fans because the Saudi fans love football. We know that. We saw the reactions when the Saudis beat Argentina. We saw how much they adored football. So they understand what kind of talent they're getting. Maybe they know it's at the end of his career, but they're going to respect the N'Golo Kante and I'm very happy they're going to do that. That's just my personal. Finally, I need to give you lot an update on the US men's national team star, uh, Christian Pulisic. I've got no clue what's going on with this man because I thought he'd be the first one out the door. I genuinely thought deals were ready. I genuinely thought him and Hakim would literally, as soon as the window opens, voila, they go. The reality is the window's not open yet, but we're not even hearing anything coming out from that side saying that he's gonna go. There were negotiations with AC Milan who are, were very keen to sign him and I don't blame him. I think Pulisic stays fit stays active, starts playing. That right wing spot at Milan will most probably be his. He'll be competing with Diaz, he'll be competing with Liao, and he will most probably be coming off the bench initially, but once he gets a run in that league, the Italian one, he's gonna score goals, and he's going to be very efficient and productive. However, with Paolo Maldini being sacked and removed from his post at Milan, we don't know what's next for him. So we need to be realistic, we need to be honest, and I think this is the big one. I think we need to be patient. I don't want to be too patient because I really need him to move on because we have got a squad that is too, too, too dilute. There is no air room for Bandem to even change. Like everyone is changed close, everyone is literally squished into one room. It's worrying. Furthermore, I think this is another big thing that we need to start considering. Newcastle rejected him. He's been offered to Newcastle. They've afforded Chelsea. We do not want him. Thank you for the offer. We've considered it. We've really thought about it in advance, but we do not want him. So, peeps, this was the Kafka's view. This is a breakdown of the news that has come out today. There'll be another video tomorrow. And yeah, the video tomorrow is going to be a different one, but it's one that you lot really like. It's one that you lot really appreciate on a regular basis, actually. I make it every year, and it almost kickstarts the summer. So, if you're new, you'll find out. If you don't know, try in the comments below, guess what I'm talking about. Because if you're a regular viewer, you know what I'm talking about. But hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, let me know your thoughts. Just a quick summary from the video today. Kai Havertz's deal looks set to have collapsed. Um, N'Golo Kante gets a blockbuster deal for 100 million euros per year. You've got Levi Colwell's camp negotiating with Brighton, but is Brighton pushing for him and Chelsea are not interested. Chelsea are not interested in selling him and Christian Pulisic is at the moment in limbo. We don't know what's gonna happen to him, so we're gonna have to be patient and we're gonna be honest. Peace out, I'm out, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel.